me to talk about the Cuban Cube Missile Crisis. Yeah. What? The Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about short time then Mera will take over. She wants Okay. To say I have been requested the... to tell my stories. She wants to tell stories of how she grew up with Baba. That'd be great, yeah. <coughs> so, uh, sometime in 1961, Baba had uh, given out that he wants to hold a, a big gathering uh, and he wanted to invite all his eastern and western lovers to India. Uh, and have a sort of a combined meeting of the East and West. So it was known as the East-West Gathering. <coughs> it was the first and the last time that Baba did such a thing. And he had a very great spiritual purpose behind it to bring both these cultures together, the East and the West, which, which we don't know what, what it is, but it must be that because now we see so much uh, intermingling mm -hmm. of both the cultures, the East and the West. So <coughs> great uh, enthusiasm was evinced by Baba lovers all over the world and preparations were begun in right earnest. Uh, Baba had called a meeting first and uh, for the workers he wanted to hold the meeting here but it was not practical so it was decided to hold it at Guru Prasad in Pune. It was the palace of the Maharani of Baroda, which had a very special, which was a very spacious mansion, and with big uh, open space all around. It had the backside big area, there was in the front side lawns. It was a beautiful place. So Baba says that's the place where he'll hold it. So <coughs> we, we were all brought, uh, the work, mostly the workers were from Pune, and uh, Baba told them to arrange for this meeting and uh, that he wanted it to be the, for four days from November 1st, 1962 to uh, November 4th and I think one day more was there or what I can't remember. It was I think four days. The last day was to be a public darshan when the outside public from, from Pune could have Baba's darshan. Otherwise, for the first three days, it was just his lovers from all over the world. So, <coughs> Baba decided that uh, the Westerners should be called in the morning session from 9 to 12, and the Easterners to be called in the afternoon. No, that was, yes, that's that that's was fine. later. That's that fine. Was, that was I'm sorry. He wanted... And they were on different sides also. Uh, they had their special pillow. They, they used to sit on one side uh, in the morning and then in the afternoon we would go. It was morning and afternoon. It was morning and afternoon because at the meeting. Mar morning, morning was western. Western, yeah. absolutely. Morning. Because because, because Baba said it would be cooler during the morning. Yeah, yeah. 
and in the afternoon it would be very hot. I thought it was the Westerners were in the front rows and the Easterners were behind. That, that was, that was late in the afternoon. Right. So in the morning, only the Westerners were called. And they had a small pendol erected on the other side of Guru Prasad, it was, so yeah. it was it was a very small, intimate. Then it was in the hall itself. In the, the hall Guru itself. Prasad hall. Like, okay, we had to climb up steps. I remember going for the westerners From the thing. porch. From the porch. That's yeah. right. One morning. That was the porch. Yeah. So it was a morning time for the westerners, and for the easterners and westerners afternoon, where the westerners were given the front seat. <laughs> So that having come from long distance, they could be nearer to Baba. <laughs> yeah, they were given a little preference. <clears throat> so great preparations were going on. In the meantime, Baba was here and he was in strict seclusion. No one was allowed to see him. And when he worked in seclusion, he, he, it was very intense work that he did. And the result was that it would <coughs> have effect on his body. And his body would show signs of great strain. So as the days went by, he was more and more doing concentrated seclusion work and <clears throat> that was having a very adverse effect on his body. So much so that uh, during the <clears throat> last months before the gathering, Baba's health really began to look very frail. He could hardly walk uh, and had to be supported. And uh, the Mandali were feeling very anxious as to how Baba would be able to give out, to be able to hold this meeting at all. So every now and then, Eraj would, my brother Eraj, he would tell Baba that Baba, I think we should cancel this gathering because your physical condition will not be able to stand the strain. And Baba says, no, whatever happens, the meeting must take place. She can't see. <laughs> so, are you alright? said the meeting must be held whatever happens and no cancellation. As the days went, as, as the days passed, <coughs> his health began to deteriorate all the more. And every time Eraj would say, Baba, please cancel the meeting. Even now it's not too late because uh, from the West and all, they were having chartered flights and all. So Baba says, no, they must, this meeting must be held. So they keep, kept going like that. Then, <clears throat> in the, the last week of October 1962, Baba came to Guru Prasad. I think a week or two in, in advance to see how it was all going on and be there at Guru Prasad. So <clears throat> we would all, the workers would be called in the morning to report to Baba how, what the progress was. Hotels were being arranged for uh, the Westerners and uh, other places for the Easterners to come and reside. <clears throat> so all these things were going on and Baba would hear us and 
you would hardly seem to notice what was going on. You would sit in the chair and just, you would talk and then he would say, now I want to go in and <coughs> the mandli had to support him while he walked. It was very difficult for him to even walk. And we would then disperse and go out to do our jobs. <coughs> for me it was helping Merji to fix the hotel rooms and, and the names of people where they would stay in different hotels. Because in those days, who now was not a very big city as it is now. <coughs> Hotel accommodation was very limited and very few good hotels were there. And there were small hotels, so we had to accommodate them in various small hotels. The others were in charge of the eastern accommodation. Some were in charge of transport and other things. It was quite a big sort of affair. In any case, <coughs> as the days went by, Baba would come and be there with the mandli, and he would hardly seem to take notice of what was going around. And every, the mandli were feeling more and more anxious that how will Baba be able to he at the meeting was hardly able to talk, take any part in any conversation and he was more and more into his own work as it were and he looked when we went, would be in his presence he looked very pale <coughs> and very haggard there was signs of total exhaustion in his body <coughs> And we all wondered how it was going to be. So, <coughs> at that time, what happened was that the political situation also became very serious. As you all must be knowing, it was 1962 when the Cuban Missile, missile crisis occurred. Uh, it seems that America had uh, stationed uh, atomic weapons very, very close to Russian borders in Europe and other places. To retaliate that, the Russians wanted to place missiles in Cuba very close to the American continent and they started to send these atomic missiles to Cuba and uh, America wanted to stop that and the, as the Russian boats were approaching Cuba, the American Navy was getting ready to fight them. And it was a very close affair. It looked as if the world war, another third world war would take place and the two big nations were poised against each other because <coughs> of all, all this crisis that happened. And <coughs> just at that time, Baba's meeting was there. So it was with difficulty that the Westerners could fly over to India. It was a very emergency time and the whole world was on tender hooks. And <coughs> just then <coughs> India was attacked by China from the